Welcome to the Thinking Church podcast with Lee Button and me, Chris Bright. Thinking Church exists to help your church thrive by helping you think through key strategic topics of church life. Each week we'll be tackling a different subject of church life and we'll be joined by some special guests along the way. So if you like this podcast, why not give us a like, give us a rating and give us a review as well. So without further ado, get your thinking caps on and let's get on with this week's episode. In which case, I'll just I'll just hit record. I was going to say, can you pause that a minute while I go and just quickly sort something? Yes, that's back. fine. And and here we are. What I, the thing I love about podcasts is, you know, you just say hit hit pause, and it's like to in in pod world, no time has gone past at all. But for us, about two minutes has, which I think is how we can understand the film Interstellar. <laughs> I I really like that movie. Oh, it's a great movie. I, I, so some people find it a little bit ridiculous. And at the end, it does get a bit odd. Um, but I think my, the best bit is when they, they go to this, they go through this wormhole and then they go back and they go onto this planet where it's just water with a giant wave, um, which isn't good enough. And they come back and they, you know, it seems like it's been about 10 minutes and it's actually, you know, everyone else is aged by 30 years or something. And the guys, you know, this guy has just been, sat there on a, a spaceship by himself for 30 years um and uh yes i think that that was a good scene i i remember i was at was it around the time that that must have been out i was yeah because it must be five six years old now that movie yeah it must be yeah. yeah yeah i was at um the storyline conference with donald miller Okay, and they had a guest speaker on, obviously storyline, and they they you know they're breaking down how story works. That's yes. one of the things that they're they're looking at, and they had Mike McCargo, um, uh, Science Mike. Oh came yeah, on, yeah, yeah, and he, he was like, yeah, it's a really good movie, but um, uh, from a science perspective, I am actually going to uh, ruin ruin it in one go. And he just like said, this equation doesn't do that because this would happen. I was like, oh, right, really? that's the whole film written off. <laughs> oh, that's, <laughs> that's, that's the that's the entire premise of the whole movie written off. <laughs> but they did like there, there were some things that from the research from the film, it then became scientific. Then it went into scientific journals and all that kind of stuff. So it was actually they they did try their best to get some good scientists. Yeah, I on think there. I think it's one of those things where it's like the individual elements. I think all stuff added up. But there was like one thing that's kind of like, yeah, you know, to, to make the movie better it was kind of like, yeah, yeah. That, that, that's the sticking point. Everything else but this. I don't think that was the thing, isn't it? And um, apparently that's one of the adaptations. We talk about adaptation at the minute, that we are, because of lockdown and pandemic and limits on travel and people moving around, we are going to see an explosion of kind of like sci-fi films because they yes. can be filmed against green screen and they're in, you know, you need limited, limited space to carry a lot of them out. So we're going to get a lot more like yes. you know, stuff within one setting on a on a plane in one building, um and sci-fi level stuff. Apparently that's that's one of the changes we're gonna see. Well, yeah, and, and this this is the thing though, you do miss something out when you when it all goes green screen, I don't know why this is becoming a film podcast now, and I'm um, I'm perfectly I'm perfectly at ease with that. Um, and, and I'll I'll come on to a, my my thinking other anecdote. cinema, yeah, thinking cinema. I'll come to my, my other anecdote in a second. But when you have those things where you know the, the, it reminds me of the difference between the Lord of the Rings films and the Hobbit films, because the Lord of the Rings films was it did have a lot of CGI, but it was predominantly shot on location. You know, they were literally wandering around the southern island of New Zealand. And in the Hobbit films, they decided eh, we can shoot this in Pinewood Studios or something and get away with it. But you just couldn't get away with it because you just looked at it and it just it missed that uh, that thing of realism. I think that's it. It's pushing the boundaries before the tech was there. Um, I haven't watched it myself yet, but it's on my on my list is uh, mainly because of my intrigue with the tech is the Mandalorian. Oh, yeah. That yeah. is 
shot against a it's a, it's a generated world on screens in the background so it's not actually quite green screen because there's actually something on the screens when you're doing what you're doing Oh, so th- this is um, this it, is a um, a Christopher Nolan trick because um, he doesn't use green screens. He just gets giant TVs, like giant LED screens and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, and then puts the image on that screen so it's more real. Which is yeah. just so that that's apparently a bit of like, so they've made this like three hundred and sixty screen studio that they can generate the backdrops in real time. And then wow. if the director says, "Oh, this needs moving," that rock needs putting over there. Someone just like you know, click, drag, and drop. <laughs> Well, this does lead, lead me on to my lovely little anecdote, um, which can lead into the, the start of the pod, which was that um, uh, I saw something on Twitter this week where it was the uh, the great uh, film critic Mark Kermode, um, and I, you know I like I like his podcast Five Live, great show, and I saw he retweeted something which said you know every two person podcast are these two people, and it was like Ryan Gosling and Russell Crowe. And so I thought, this is this is hilarious. You know, we're a predominantly two-person podcast show. So I just straight away retweeted it and said, Lee, which one are you? And what I didn't read was there was a rather rude um, Twitter handle. And so then I got a text from you saying, Chris, did you read the, the handle? No, no, I didn't. And, uh, and therefore... Yeah, Therefore, we've all silly. learned a lesson. We've all <laughs> learned a lesson. Read the tw- even if it is someone that you respect has retweeted it. They may have not read so, the Twitter handle either. I mean, this is one where, like, we're going to go. So, which, which, which duo would we most think we're most alike, or would we most like to be? But the you know people listening in are really not going to be probably kind about that. So no, it's a. I don't know. Is that, although we, you know, with 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 your with the dark hair and the beard that's coming there, actually, actually, you're 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 tending more towards the Russell Crowe in that picture. Well, maybe I am. Yeah, maybe I am. You know, that's that. Except, I'm, I'm all right with being Russell Crowe, apart from I don't know. You you can sing. <laughs> well, you know, I think that might be uh, harsh on Russell Crowe. He got 150 sales, didn't he, of that of his of his band? So, yes. Yeah. Anyway, he also got a part in a top movie singing. Oh dear. Anyway, yeah, let's uh, let's let, let's do that. What, what so film is this was that? Is was that Les Oh, really? I've not seen that film. Okay, we need to see that. Okay, let's let's park that there, and we'll get started with the podcast. Um, because today we're not going to be tackling a subject per se, but the subject is kind of where we're up to. So what we've done is we've said we're going to bring to you uh, one thing each that we've been people that we've been working with. And just talking around that, and um, and so a little bit of an update on that. Uh, one thing we've been working on, so maybe uh, something that we've been uh, you, know, you know working for, working on in terms of uh, some projects we've been working on. Um, then something we've been learning, and then Lee, you added a fourth one, literally just a moment before we uh, we started recording. Which was we, what was the fourth uh, one? The- trends that we're seeing in the work Tr- that's coming in trends that we're seeing okay so let's do that so let's jump just jump into the uh, the first one uh, so that is people we've been working with so lee who who have you been working with and let's let's talk about that and maybe some um you, we don't have to go into specifics if we don't want to but we can maybe look at some of the um this kind of church has been working with this kind of scenario so um yeah yeah so i think i mean obviously people listening uh i've been working a lot with chris yeah as well because there's you know let let let's not forget that um we're we're trying to develop community and uh content around thinking church that can help people and support people so you know there's there's some transition in there and we are you know moving things forward and we're replatforming things and we're revamping stuff with the with the website and there's some really good stuff coming in there so i think you know that 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 for me is uh that's taken a lot of a lot of thinking time there's probably 
you know, has been up there. But on a on a more on a more client side, there's uh, I've got a really exciting little project working with a group of Methodist churches um, in who I mean they form a circuit. And, you know, some people know what that is. Others may be less familiar with it. But basically, that's their, their little kind of like local network. Or in this sense, in this instance, it's not actually quite that local. It's such a big area. And uh, yeah. they've, you know, they've they've adapted really well. They've transitioned leadership during lockdown, wow. uh, you know, okay. things like that. And, you know, some of that is that that's coming along. But now now they're doing that thing of trying to revamp the style of how how the team worked um and you know under one under one leadership one way but under the under the new person coming in they want to do it slightly differently so we're looking at changing in working styles that's been very exciting really good uh, but obviously you know with the with the virtual setup of how we're doing stuff it's you you don't bite things off quite the same way uh, that we once did so that's been that's been really interesting i've touched on two three and four all in one go there uh, with introducing who we're working with and the uh but you know we'll expand on that as we as we as we talk around it and then the second one was um a small church chris that actually you you'd predominantly started working with um a year or more ago maybe even yes. nearly two years ago now actually yeah, nearly two years ago yeah we, we forget the the last 12 months is condensed it is it either feels like a, a minute or a decade doesn't it depending which depending yeah. on how you how you review it <laughs> yes and then um i'm i'm actually now working with them as a they are a small independent church that actually have two locations they're doing yeah. some brilliant stuff um but they are the, the struggle is around governance mm -hmm. and the kind of like the legal and operating structure to do the things that they want to do and they've they've felt a bit not i wouldn't not as far as demoralized but they they've, they've had that frustration that some of the stuff that they need they haven't they haven't had so yeah. it's that how do they overcome and put in knowledge when they're not sure what knowledge they're missing so it's been a really fun one to just get alongside them introduce them to some of the the right people to help take those things forward. So yeah, for me, it's the extremes. It's a, you know, a well-established old network with the Methodist principles across their circuit, and then a really small two location, independent, non-denominational church. Um, so that, that's been the extremes that I've been working with at the, at the start of this year. It's, it's been a lot of fun. What, what, what about yourself, Chris? Yeah, well, firstly, I mean, that does sound like a lot of fun. And I remember, you know, the the small independent church that you, you're working with and I worked with, you know, nearly two years ago, a fantastic church and uh, doing really wonderful, amazing things. And uh, and so, yeah, really, really great. Um, so who I've been working with, um, I've been working with a denomination called the New Testament Church of God and uh, just a fantastic church. And, and um, I was able to work with the, one of their districts um in the southeast and and start to look at uh that area and help them starting to think through a few a few bits and pieces and uh just um, you know amazing leaders uh really razor sharp thinking which i was just i was so impressed by um they um i did a, a sort of a day with their whole district and um and in that i kind of gave them some some tasks to go away with and you know the clarity that they you know they they really tackled the uh the sessions that i uh, i went through with them they really tackled it really really well went through it with real clarity of thought really really liked that and then being able to work with some of the individual churches more recently and um and we've been working quite a bit more sort of piecemeal so it's more uh more on sort of saturday mornings because you know it's all on you know we've got to do this all on zoom and yep. um and so uh going on zoom so we're just you know going through what we can do because you know majority volunteer base you know and and working through okay so saturday mornings are the best time for them to do that so let's do that so let's not try and get through you know three full days of planning which is you know it, which is one way of doing it but there's i think there's something quite nice about taking that slightly slower pace because it means that you have much more breathing time much more reflection time all of that kind of thing. And I think that's really benefited them. So uh, we've been predominantly looking at target market 
and looking at who's in their area. So I've been doing a lot of uh, demographics uh, study. So looking at uh, the Office of National Statistics, which is helpful, uh, except for the, the last census was 10 years ago and the, uh, the new census is coming out this month. Uh, so people are going to be um, are going to be interviewed this month. Well, not interviewed. It's surveyed, isn't it? It's a survey. Um, so, yeah. so you're, we're working with all of this data, and there's some there's some you know updates and estimates. And so, but we're taking all of that into account. You know, you've got to take all of that data into account. But then it's not about leaving it there at demographics and saying you know we're going to be trying to reach. 20s to 30s or something like that. that that's not what we're trying to do it we we're, we've been diving deeper into okay what do people believe and want and uh and so getting into those beliefs and wants and then uh, the great fun is then you can start to think about okay you know let's let's take that one step further you know what what car would they drive what you know what they're gonna be doing on a saturday morning or a sunday morning even you know what what they're going to be uh watching on tv you know what's what what's their favorite books and all these kind of things and it just creates this amazing picture uh of who it is that they're trying to reach and uh and it just help it's it's been helping them really clarify in their mind okay we are designing our ministry for them and it will yeah. you know we talked about this sort of narrow um it's, it's like a narrow focus you you focus really narrowly but then you have this really broad reach because actually it's a bit like a, a camera I, I explained it like a camera your your focus is is very very narrow but your your reach of, the, of what the camera takes you know you focus very narrowly on one spot on the on the photo but the, you reach a whole area and that's uh and that's what we what we've been doing and it's it's been really really good fun and um more to come with that as well and and uh and it's uh it's been really just wonderful working with that denomination and uh, really been enjoying it fantastic yeah and i think i mean that 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 probably touches a little bit onto we'll circle back on 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 the trends but how people are engaging in doing this kind of work is definitely yeah. something now where I'm, I'm seeing small patterns emerge. Um, so with, within that, what kind of, uh, what, what you, you, you've expanded a little bit on the, uh, what you've been working on the, the yeah. actual, the actual um, project pieces, like when, when you first started that or when they first contacted you, is that what they thought that they were going to end up working on? Like, how did you arrive at that? I mean, what, had they already identified it or did they say something isn't right? And then after, you know, a conversation, some initial like workshop things, they go, oh, we need to work on this. And we hadn't really known that before. Yeah. So um, we were initially contacted by them because they had heard of us through Premier. And, uh, you know, I, I write uh, blogs every now and again for Premier Christianity, which is, you know, fantastic uh, organization. And we've appeared on their radio shows a couple of times as well and they heard of us through that and just said could you talk to us about church health and and so on uh, and so we got the, the district together and went through a whole series and i um we've been working on a a kind of like a health score and and so you can almost sort of rate your church on we've got we've worked out 12 areas 12 key areas and um you know they 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 might they might stay 12 they might become 15 we don't know yet but at the moment they're 12 and so we worked on these 12 areas and we just said look on these this is what you know rank yourself as red amber green you know this is what red looks like this is what amber looks like this is what green looks like and um and they came came back and said ah oh, yeah okay and so after the end of that, I said, look, work on the red things first, because they're the most pressing things. Because if, you know, something's green, what we don't want to do is say, oh, no, you have to go through this really linear process of going through everything, even if something might yeah. be working really, really well. So we've we've kind of moved away from having to have a really linear process on things and move much more to where are where where is the need how can we help support that need and that means that it's it, it is moving some things around and so uh when we did the assessment they came back and said yeah we need to know our mission statement that was uh that was what they came back and so as part of that mission statement you've got to know uh, you can't just know why you exist which is what the mission statement's there to say but unless you know who you're there who you exist for then you don't know you can't properly articulate why because that why is always articulated to someone it's a conversation 
So you always have, you're talking to the person. So if you don't know the person you're talking to, you're going to use the wrong language. You're going to, you're not even going to make, you know, who are you reaching? Who are you talking to? So uh, yeah. we have to first define that and then we can define the mission statement. Yeah, and I think, you know, there was part of that that's really important as well is that if you do a quick snapshot to help them see some of the things that are already going well, yeah, you know, where, where there is health, is that the, it allows you to like focus and go, well, look, what we're doing is like almost warm you up into this way of processing, thinking, working, workshopping, getting the conversation going. Yeah, Let's have some conversations around these things that are obviously less contentious or you know, simpler just by nature, uh, that it allows us to pick them off and prioritise the right thing. And, you know, the number of times I've gone in to, to work with people, and this is not just charities now, this is like, you know, clients, charities, public sector, that if we had been, if we'd have adhered to some super rigid process, it's like, no, I'm starting at A. And then, you know, that mandated in you you can you can use up a lot of energy and resource and goodwill of people to just mine over stuff that could have been quicker or simpler or lighter um, or or parked to then by yeah. the time you get to the thing that really needs it you could have you could have blown out a lot of attention particularly in a virtual space mm-hmm. where you know and volunteers where people people are giving their time to it so yeah, I like that thing. And once you get going with that, it's much easier to equip people to do it themselves. So yeah. This is now how you're looking after the health in this. And what we're doing is we're giving you permission to name the things that aren't working and address them. Yeah. And and you devolve that responsibility rather than having always to be this kind of like hierarchical way of dealing with it. Actually, we're equipping individual teams within the large organizations to make the changes that they require um but you know that's that's so often coming along now but also what people want to do it's like we want to look at this we want to we want to take the lid off but actually we don't want to do that on our own because we need someone who when that lid comes off can give us some calming guidance as to no this this is manageable there's nothing here that's there's nothing here that we haven't seen before and the thing is, it's so, you know, when you open some of these things and start working on them, you can realize how scary it is. And um, because what it can mean is, you know, it's it's paradigm shifting because now you're going, well, I thought about how we, you know, how you ran church or why you did church or all, all these kind of things this way. And I, I was entrenched in this view, but suddenly I know that's not, be, you know, that's not been effective for us and we've got to rethink. And it can be scary when you go from, knowing to unknowing and and we talk about this quite a lot in that's that cycle of going from knowing to unknowing to sort of new knowledge yeah. and 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 that's kind of we always take people on that journey where you you they, they kind of go people go through that thing of going oh this feels uncomfortable and i always have to sort of uh warn people that i'm going to make you feel uncomfortable and i think good um a good change process should always make you feel uncomfortable um, because because you are breaking things open and you're shifting your view on something. And I, I've had that with the churches I've been working with. It, it was, you know, you reach a point and it feels really uncomfortable for the church because they're, they're having to think through things that they've never thought through before or in a way they've never thought through before. And I think that's been really vital. Every single church I've worked with has had that moment. And, uh, and sometimes it's, I don't, I don't, I'm not really getting this or I don't feel like I'm, it hasn't clicked yet. And then just, to, you just wait that little bit longer and suddenly everything falls into place and that new knowledge comes. And that's a really great moment. Yeah. And I, there's part that goes along with that is, you know, we're not going to get to where we want to go by doing what we've always done. So when we do turn up and start things with people, it is different. They haven't done it before. Yeah, And that, that can give, uh, make people a little apprehensive 
maybe a little anxious because it's different. Um, but you know, that's the trust the process. Like, you know, we, we know how to apply this appropriately and we're also not going to just spend the time doing the things that aren't necessary. So we are going to, you know, move this to focus on what actually needs addressing at any, any given point. I think that's important, but even so with this, with this small, small group of church, small church that um, I've been working with, one of their frustrations was a piece of work that needed to happen. And they were working really well with a uh, solicitor. Yeah. But then actually they didn't know that what they were getting back wasn't appropriate in their context, like a faith context with a good angle for understanding what they were trying to achieve through faith objectives and how that applied to how they wanted to run, how they recognized spiritual leadership, um, what that meant in terms of decision making and looking after buildings and things like that. So the stuff was functionally right, but they knew something, but they thought that changing solicitors was hard because they like, you know, they sense of loyalty and it was, it was difficult. And I was like, no, we can, we can move that on really, really easily. We'll just do this. So I go and make a, go and make a call, introduce them to another set of solicitors. And that whole process doesn't just move forward. It leaps forward. Yeah. Yeah. And all of a sudden they're getting guidance in a much wider context. It's way more applicable. And these people are going, no, we can do buildings in the conveyancing side and the practical piece. We can handle registrations and updates. But actually, in terms of governing document, our faith department isn't somebody who's seen this before. It's a team of people who are specialists. Yeah. And But they needed some handholding through that process just to go, no, switching solicitors is easy. Like you, you've built this up like this was going to be traumatic or really, really difficult. Actually, getting what you need is an imperative here and is going to unlock yeah. so many more things that come after it. And so all of a sudden, I spend, I mean, yesterday, that was kind of, I say it's a day of work. It was on and off, you know, leading those conversations, getting a couple of documents together, helping them formulate a brief for the solicitor. That's the other bit. How knowing how to brief never go to a solicitor with a blank piece of paper uh, <laughs> you know just word to, word to the wise because they'll do the investigation and it probably will be quite expensive um you know solicitors are absolutely worth their weight in gold for what they deliver but actually it's good to go prepared with what options you really really want to focus on and how you want to explore mm -hmm. so i just help them design a briefing sheet for that transfer what they're looking to do and some thoughts that they have around it to kind of like guide it that the solicitor's going, oh, you've got a couple of options here. And then they can interview and talk to them, see whether it's a good fit and off we go. But it's amazing how much that, you know, our work isn't, is, you know, I would say that that's strategic. It's also yeah. mostly experience. Yeah. Uh, but the other bit is it's just being able to make those introductions for people, but also if you're not getting what you need out of someone, you've, you've got to go. And we, we can't faff around, you know, ultimately we're trying to reach people. We're trying to see people come to faith. We, we, our imperative is to keep this moving and, and to ensure that we're on a good track with everything and things change and we need to change as times go and moving, you know, accountants and auditors, if we're of that scale and solicitors, sometimes it's necessary in order to achieve what we need to achieve. And our church isn't the same as we were when we made that decision to select them in the first place. Yeah. You know, five years go by, 10 years go by. If our church is finding that level of health and we're now bigger or we have a building or, you know, giving goes up, the people who help get us there might not be the people to take us to that next level either. So, you know, it needs to be constantly in review. And I, th I th you know, I think there's a topic in itself about, the legal and operational aspect of uh, running our churches and charities and our projects. But there's, there's this piece like it was really beginning to hinder them. And it was a, it was a missing knowledge gap. Some churches have this knowledge within their trustees. That's amazing. But let's not forget there are smaller churches and people out there who are really focused with the mission and objective of what they're doing. Some of those, some of those skills aren't, aren't present just because of the, point in time or the scale that they're at and that's another it's another area where 
you know, we like to network people and make sure that they're meeting people who can talk to them about that. Yeah, great. Okay, let's move on to uh, question number two, which is uh, something you're working on at the moment. So like a project. Uh, what is a project that you've been working on currently or been working on recently, Lee? So, I was gonna say, so within, within the thinking church kind of uh, uh, realm, um, as it were, I've just started a really nice little project with um, a couple of guys that I know who are um, looking to shape and develop materials for evangelism okay. and they are they're looking at raising some funding to develop the resources I and mean, it's it, it's lower it's low amounts really um, but you know it still needs a structure needs a bank account they need some things in place uh, these materials are going to be delivered freely but actually this is a really cool little project. I've been able to just go, I, I can help you map that out. We're going to, you know, develop some templates, help you think through all of the, the things that you need to think through. And, you know, I'm, I'm excited because we talk a lot about people who've developed tools for helping with like, you know, mission. We talk yeah. about a lot about people who help stuff with like, you know, team development and leadership pipelines. And even discipleship's got a lot more focus now than it once mm. had. And it was just in talking to them, I was like, I actually think that evangelism in in in, in the real sense, you know, everything from an, in, uh, you know, invitational aspect to how we just bring people along uh, is, is due an overhaul for people to think differently about it. Yeah. And particularly at this time where, you know, it's a personal responsibility to, to invite, uh, but we've got that mixed. We've gone online. We've done church online. Actually, we're a little bit back to it's very easy to consume church at the moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rather than you know be uh, you know, a contributor uh, and do something, you know, church has become practically on demand during a lot of this period, particularly in the UK where we've had longer instances of lockdown. So yeah, I'm I'm really excited. I think I think they they have the opportunity to do for evangelism that kind of almost what alpha did for new christians and the co those those seeking uh they've got some incredible material so that that's a project i'm working on at the moment uh and that's to the side of some stuff i'm doing with uh a doctor's surgery and some work with the nhs <laughs> which is you know very different covid related mostly but uh that, that that that's my other strand of work that I'm working on. But under thinking church, yeah, it's with the, with these guys looking at evangelism. I'm really excited for where that goes. Well, yeah, and this was a, I was working with a church on an evangelism strategy just recently, and when you think look at the, you know the customer journey or the spiritual journey or kind of any journey from from not knowing to being you know you, you people go on this journey from I mean this is worth a, a podcast in itself you know taking people on a journey from. Uh, awareness then consideration decision then uh, loyalty then advocacy at the end and so I was helping a church think through those first three stages so how can we help create an evangelism strategy that that, that will take people from awareness so you firstly you've got to make people aware that your church exists you know then consideration yeah. you know what does it mean to uh, explore faith in, or you know explore that kind of thing and then to a point of decision you know actually we want to help people make decisions and make a decision for jesus and and to join a a church family and that, that's a really great thing and so i think that evangelism strategy there is definitely a gap for that because i think there, there'll be certain things where you know online church kind of can fit some of the consideration piece but I think that uh, especially in the online sphere, there is for those people that maybe aren't even because even consideration is almost like I think that maybe online church maybe comes more at the decision end of things as well. Because what people want to do, I, I heard this great phrase, um, which is that people people come for the content, but stay for the community. And it's yeah. that's just a, that's a kind of a true thing of, you know, 
you know, membership sites and all this kind of thing. But um, we've actually got to work really, really well for people who are looking to engage with faith uh, and looking at, okay, what does Christianity mean? That they have really great content, but then they've got to have really great community with that so that they come for the content, but they stay for the community. And, and you know, hopefully they stay for the content as well. Uh, but it's actually becoming part of a community of faith. So, I, yeah, I think that's, that's very, very exciting. Um, and, uh, uh, yeah, looking forward to hearing more about that very, very soon. Um, so w- what I've been working on, um, I've been working on a brand new Thinking Church website. Uh, it's not ready yet. We're, we're getting dun, 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 there. Dun. I need my soundboard back. Oh, what's, yeah, the soundboard is. Oh, man, I am lacking today. It's okay. We'll, we'll get it. Um, so, um, yeah, we're working on a new website and we've actually gone to, I mean, this is actually probably worth us talking about and getting, you know, get under the hood of our new website because um, that could, because actually this could be really helpful for churches. Uh, we've decided to go down one of these kind of all in one package deals kind of uh where you still have to go and make the website yourself but we're not using wordpress uh so there are many of these kind of sites exist and we're using a company called kajabi other companies do exist and other you know are available um but we we really liked it because you're able to make really nice looking websites uh but also has the integration of marketing and you can create products on there like membership and, and community and that's what we really uh wanted to go towards was having it somewhere where we can create a sense of you know community of church thinkers and leaders uh, all gathering in one place to be able to talk about ideas and having a bit of a forum for that so we're, we're building that and creating that as well as membership and we've got that we've got kind of a membership function on our, on our current site but it's still it was very much in its really really early very rudimental stage so we we've been putting way more work around that re-filming some things re-putting things together um and so that we've got some, some really great video content it's specifically i mean it's for for all churches really but specifically for small churches where you know it could be really difficult for churches to uh, maybe uh, get us on site that might be something that may, may not be possible um, maybe just because of, it could be a finance thing, it could be a, a timing thing or whatever, or it could just be a, a team dynamic thing that they just, you know, that's just how they want to do it. And they want to think about doing it more themselves. And that's fine. You know, if churches want to do that, it's absolutely great. Um, and so we're, we're creating online facilitation, really. So it's me yeah. sat there with a chart in front of me and going, here's the chart. You can download the chart and I'll show you what to do. And I'll show you, I'm basically your kind of facilitator coach, really, and facilitating you through all the things like, you know, mission statement and, uh, you know, values, simple guiding principles, those kind of things, your discipleship strategy, uh, your evangelism strategy, um, financial uh, principles and all these kind of vision and all these kind of things. So I've, I've been working really hard on that. We're close, really, really close to launch uh, now. So uh, we're probably in the sort of final push phase. We've just got a few more bits to work out, but that's been that's been taking up a decent amount of my uh, a decent amount of my time. Uh, but yeah, a fun project. And I think for churches, I think thinking through your website, I, I think one thing I found a bit, kind of a learning from it is that when you create a website, it really does focus how you think of what you're creating. And I think I would really actually recommend, so often we think of, you know, if you're a church leader, just get someone to make a website, but actually forcing yourself to be involved in that project as a church leader, it really focuses the, well, what are you going, what do you say you do? Because you've got to get it into a, um, understandable digestible format and if you have too many things here there and everywhere it just becomes unwieldy and you and i think every church knows what that feels like so forcing yourself into a a mode where i've I've got to think this through from the point of view of someone who never heard of us before it's such a great uh discipline to get into and so i really recommend that the church leaders get involved in their own website you know you don't have to go make it yourself but be involved in that process i think it's really important There's, there's some <clears throat> I've actually got a, 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 a client, a, 
faith-based faith-based charity but uh their, their work isn't about kind of like uh faith per se they're going through this exact thing with website and it's really funny when it's like actually the responsibility of that can't be delegated that's yeah. the thing i was like no this is going to take time from your senior people to actually think this through and i was like i was like why do people come to your website and it's that they come to you know refer themselves or refer someone else i was like right your opening statement is all about x and that's nothing to do with that <laughs> it's like yeah oh yeah and i'm like actually churches often do that and we have, we have that drift where a lot of our communications starts to tend towards those who are already in the know who are already inside and part of what yes. we do yes yeah um, and we forget that actually you know you know you know i get you know i get i get emails from people like apple okay and for those who don't know i'm quite well invested in the apple ecosystem already i yes. follow the rumors sites i know what they're up to i i watch their videos i know what's coming but their communication out to me is rarely because I'm someone in the know. They still, all of their stuff is primarily for people who don't know. Yes. Yeah. Um, and so I'm like, but am I put off by that when I receive it? No. Yeah. Like, it, it's really funny. It's like, actually, I don't think it, it's, you know, sometimes they say, you know, oh, this device is coming out. And I'm like, okay, that's a bit odd because I actually have just purchased it uh but you know that's just sometimes timing and stuff like that we all we all get that but actually once you're on the inside there is a different way to find your knowledge and to you know access things and join they actually have a community when and especially when the stores are open so i'm like you know okay maybe we're uh you know the the, the cult of apple in that sense of you know that they're set up but the principles of how some of these bigger people are doing things is is well worth looking at yeah yeah uh you know and you know there's you can even get there's like you know the their private app as it were you know the the store app that i've got is then tailored to me and my devices to prioritize information about the things i already own okay. well maybe that's more how churches should be thinking it's like yes there's all of this and there's this front material for people mm. who don't know about us but actually look apps these days the barrier to entry of developing those for your church is dropping dramatically. Okay. Yeah. Like that is not a difficult thing to do. And you could, with the information we've got on people and if they're willing to share it, you could easily start to shape some content that gives, gives back. So they see the things that are appropriate to them. Uh, so yeah, yeah, on that strategy, sorry, I, I'm going off. Maybe, maybe we do this. Uh, I think a, a kind of like a, a comms one and looking at, some of these ah oh, we could get some of our friends on from uh some of the like some of the people around digital church tools and things like that we yeah could, absolutely we yeah could, and we could bring, bring them on to have a chat about this there's, there's people out yeah. there doing this really really well who yeah. and from the faith angle really really get it like so it, it'd be an interesting and fascinating conversation to have yeah absolutely and um yeah i think i think it's really good i mean my church is we we went through that thing of creating a new website and uh so our, our website now our church is now very much focused for people that aren't part of our church and then we have our we have the app which is just so we use uh church suites again other providers are available you know that you get um what's the, the planning center and all those kind of things but church suite then becomes the kind of once you signed up for that that becomes the hub of the kind of yeah you know, you're in the know now because that's you yeah. get your, your information through that and and i think having those two things that are separate is really really good rather than having all of your kind of updates your internal updates on your website you make it very very clear who it's for and uh and, and then that really helps guide what you're going to create so yeah that, that that's uh that's really really good okay let's move on to number three question number three is something you've learned recently or been learning oh dear so much i think <laughs> it's like it's just trying to connect all these things uh well do, do you want to think okay, okay, you know, i'm gonna go i'm gonna i'm gonna go for a really gentle one people are more prone to share than we often give people credit for that's something i've really learned the communities and things that i'm part of 
when I've been asking questions and trying to find out new things, I'm finding and learning that people don't hold stuff as tightly as sometimes we think, mm -hmm. and that they're often more willing to share uh, than, than we had noticed. Uh, so, you know, that's been a real pleasant one over this time. There are nice people out there uh, who are, we're all learning from one another and sharing one another and looking at tools. Um, that that's the big one. The other, the other one that I've learned a lot of is I've recently done some training in, uh, assessing team alignment. Okay. And actually adding to my, adding to my, I'm a, I'm a, bit, I'm a bit of a magpie for tools, uh, and things that can help people. So uh, it's like, Oh, that, that would be good. So I go and learn it. And, uh, this one, this team alignment assessment about how people align to each other, the team and the organization mm -hmm. has just been an absolute eye opener. So that's a proper practical learning. I, you know, I've got some certification, uh, I'm accredited to deliver it and work with teams doing it. But that's been that's been a fascinating journey looking at team alignment. Yeah, oh, that's really cool. Um, I've been doing a lot of study on OKRs. Um, <sighs> So um, I've I've been doing lots of, you know, there's there's a whole book on it, but there's loads and loads of material that you can dive into. And the thing I found is it's not just another system. I think that's what I've written when I, the more I've delved into this, it's, it is so much, and it's, it's, it's not an easy system. That's the other thing. It, it takes a lot of practice. So um, for people that don't know, OKRs uh, stand for objectives and key results. And, uh, and they're basically a goal setting methodology, but it's, it, but it's so much more than just a, a goal setting methodology. And, and, um, and, it, and it is because it takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of practice. Uh, there's, it's not just a thing where you can just, it's a system that you can import in one sense it is, but you have to really, you have to really live in it. I think that's the best way I can describe it. Um, I heard someone say recently that that OKRs are a way of life, <laughs> and I think that's that is really true. And I think this is really this can be a really helpful tool. And there are other ones, you know, there's 4DX, which is the four disciplines of execution, is a different system. There are other ways of doing it. OKRs has kind of risen to the top because uh, people like Google and Amazon, uh, Intel companies like that have all been using them and to great effect as well. And, and you've been using them for number, a number of years, so it's not a new thing. I think Google have been using them since they started. Um, and with OKRs, I think the thing that most churches have a problem with is execution. I think that probably is true around, you know, that's probably true for businesses yeah. as well. But ex actually getting from, the, getting from the, the ideas table to the actually getting it done is the big gap. And, and I think that that's something that we probably need to work twice as hard on our execution as churches that we currently do because in reality unless the idea gets done it's still not really you haven't really done anything and i think that 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 ability to move and get things done so i've been doing lots of research into that and and it is very much a creative uh endeavor it's something that it takes practice it takes work to to write them in a in, a, in the right way so that they are effective because it's so easy to write really fuzzy goals and have fuzzy goal setting and fuzzy uh, actions on that and key results. And, and it can be really, really fuzzy really quickly. And then on the other end of it, you can also go to the, the wrong extreme of, you know, uh, there's something called Goodhart's law, which is when a, a metric becomes a target, it ceases to be a good measure. And so what you can do is on the other, other hand is you make these targets, you know, we are going to grow to this number of people and, and it becomes the target, you know, or, or whatever that is. And when you start to get to that phase, it can be a bit of a problem, a bit of a problem. So when the, when the metric becomes the objective, that becomes a bit of a problem. But I think this is what I quite like about OKRs and from my study is that the, the objective is actually more qualitative than quantitative. It's the key results that are quantitative and i think that's the thing you, we can get into the thing with churches where it either can become all qualitative or all quantitative and you've got to have that mix yeah. of both where you're talking about okay this is this is what we're wanting to achieve and it can feel a bit like oh that that doesn't feel quite you know there's not a number on that but then you need to have something with a number around it so you've got to be tracking great numbers 
um, but not getting into that that place of it becoming the where the metric becomes the target. And I think so. This is it's, re, it's been a really helpful learning experience, and and it's not just like learning a, a another system because I think I've learned a lot of other systems, and they're quite a lot of these are quite easy to pick up. But this is very much more of a uh, um, much more of a practice than it is uh, yeah than it is just a system. No, that's really, really cool. And that, that is, it's it's working out the application to the people that we work with as well. And it's like none of these things actually, when you dig into them, are, nobody's doing them pure. Yeah. We all, we all nuance them slightly because of experience and other things we've learned and added along the way. But yeah. I think, yeah, I mean, you're, you're absolutely right. It's, you can, you can give away content on so much stuff. Um, and we've all been to conferences and we've all heard how to do and we've watched TED Talks and we've read the books yeah. and we all know that still execution every time. It is. And what I, so what I like about it, because it's, it's, you've got to think, and it, it's, it's been thinking about alignment, which is what I've been thinking about. You know, how do those goals get from, how do they go from the, you know, the leadership team all the way through to someone who's on, you know, who's on a rotor somewhere? how do those things flow through and how do they not become so top down that it's command and control which is something that i think we want to avoid so i think the you know you can have that command and control extreme or you can have this like ultra bottom up extreme where people kind of do what they want and there's no oft, often no real leadership brought through and i think that's just as dangerous and i've seen that i see that more in church life rather than i think maybe we I, you know, maybe a couple of decades ago, it was a bit, it felt a bit more top down, and the pastor says what what goes. But it's become a bit more um, laissez faire, I think, recently, and that churches are now kind of free to kind of do what you want and just you know, it, it's very much a just go for it kind of culture. And we've got to find that that mix in between the two, where there's strong directional alignment being brought through, um, and people are still they still can bring through their ideas and how we can complete that and how we can move towards that. So it, it's been, I think it is an alignment tool. Okay. are really, really helpful. Uh, but you can't just go into the ring unprepared and just say, say we're just going to start doing OKRs. You've yep. got to, you, you know, it takes time. It takes help. It takes research. And, um, uh, uh, because otherwise you'll just you'll just end up doing it poorly and that's actually not going to help you at all you've actually just imported a system you know possibly bought some software around that as well and it may not even help you um so yeah if you're thinking about you know how you can do execution better talk to us you know we we that research is something that you know we're facilitators so we we can facilitate that implementation um and to help you work that through that that probably brings me nicely to a trend and that's actually with stuff like that is i am seeing greater collaboration across the whole of the church organization to co-create yeah these kind of things and that's either co-creation of the conditions because when the current conditions are correct people can thrive yeah but also in the how how will we execute like somebody's saying why we want to, but somebody now coming on like the how we're going to do it is now a collaborative effort. Yeah. Because we're we're beyond the I will tell you how to do it and you repeat it. And if you don't repeat it, you're wrong, kind of like way of doing mm -hmm. it. We can't do it. That just doesn't that just doesn't sit anymore. So I I say, yeah, the collaborative, the co-creation aspect. I mean, these are these are words you're going to see anyway, all over the place being yeah. put around about service development and uh you know answers to everything from uh climate change and local issues through to much more minor stuff but the big ones for me have been around yeah actually collaboration is 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 really getting uh the attention it deserves within how we do church that that's the big one the other one 
uh as i say can i can i can i can i go bold on one and then you know just be willing to say like this is a strong idea loosely held uh, sure. and i'm 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 willing to take it back in six months if this isn't the case but i'm i'm gonna say i think i am seeing at least the decline if not the death of the multi-day retreat to do strategy work yeah yeah okay now that just by a little caveat on that, probably not everywhere because within some larger corporate settings, the time, attention and resource is available. I'm talking about the, the charity and church end of things where yeah. we've got predominantly volunteers and there's a lot more things to address and we want to do it. I the Breaking this up into 90-minute and half-day sessions and running it over an extended period is how I am seeing... Is, is a trend I am seeing for this. And it is now not just the work you're doing, but also how you interweave that with team days and team development to tackle what you're doing. That you get these yeah. two waves going side by side over a longer period of time to see things achieved. And I haven't even, I haven't had anybody say, can we do, you know, two days or three days it's like oh i know you you know you used to come and like on a friday night do all day saturday see us on sunday work all sunday afternoon later to the evening and then you'd go away that nobody's asking for that online yeah but even even with those i'm working with where we've got an eye now to doing some stuff in person in a couple of months um they they are not asking for us to return to that they are asking for, can you come and do a morning workshop with this team and a morning and an afternoon workshop with this lot? Can you do a meeting over here? And it's it sounds protracted, but actually the the value of allowing people to digest stuff, it takes away so much uh, uh, issues with where you only get the, you know, the highest paid person's opinion you know some you yeah. know or the extrovert's opinion we're giving space now that those who maybe need to go and internalize it think about it review it and reflect it's built in yeah i'm, I'm not asking I'm, people yeah. to just come back the next day they're coming back a week later and it's yeah that i i think the multi-day retreat is kind of like tanking in this sphere i, yeah. I don't think people want to bite it off anymore we're all much more flexible there's changed behavior I, I I think that's probably going to persist. No, I actually really, really agree on that because I think there's the you know the problem with the multi-day uh, strategy re- retreat is that you get through a whole lot of stuff in a short space of time, which is really good. That is that's not a bad thing, but the problem is what what do you do with that? And you know, often you've you've created enough change that will take you, you know, it could take you five years to implement that really, really well. And sometimes it might just be easier to implement one thing at a time, get it done, get it in, and just keep the thing moving and and create create shorter horizons and keep things moving and implement them them better. And I I think that and also yeah. I think that churches just don't have that. Um, there's, there's just not that need to be able to you know and the, you know most churches have volunteers. Even large churches have a very strong volunteer you know volunteer leadership base as well. And and so to go, OK, we're going to go for, away for three or four days to do this is just not as feasible now. And I think that taking some time and going, OK, we're going to do it a morning or just a day at a time. But what that means is that so now what I'm doing more is I'm taking uh, time to teach on a subject. So because now you rather than just going straight into a session, here's what we're going to do. Make the decision. Boom. Now on to the next session, you know, decide what you're going to do, move on. And, you know, because, you know, when you're trying to ram everything into a short space of time, you have to go session, then next session, then next session. And you've just got to keep going, keep going, keep going. Yeah. Whereas when you do it slower, you can go, right, we're going to we're going to talk about we're going to talk about this and we're going to talk about you know why this is important and explain the concept and allow time for reflection and wrestling with it through and then we can go into the exercise of it and the uh, the understanding of it and what's more important is 
you know, that strategic muscles grow, that grown, you know, you, you become more of a thinking church, which is what we are all about. Yeah. And, um, and I think that's been really more helpful. So I'm doing that more, more now, you know, I'm taking, you know, maybe the first 20 minutes of a half day session just to talk through the subject and just to talk through and, and just to teach on it and just to, you know, look at it from different angles so that the understanding grows. Cause I think that's way more important than, than what you do is the understanding of why you do it because yeah. otherwise it will just fall down. A hundred percent. And when we leave, people have to be equipped that they can still do it without us. That yeah. Nobody should end up dependent on us. That's the thing. And it's like, if, if, if I'm also, if you do strategy days like that, that are really quick together, you're probably having to repeat them annually to, to such a degree that the decisions you made were, were good decisions, but were they great decisions? Yeah. Because you they represented such a strong moment in time and you put such pressure on that this decision will be made today yeah it's like well what if we need to research what if we need to pilot what if we need somebody else like yeah we we've got to allow that premature convergence on decisions is damaging overall yeah because it makes quite a knee-jerk way of operating i think slowing it down embedding the reflection phase i mean i've, I've talked about this with actually a, a recent client that they had a change cycle that had <clears throat> that just went straight back to repeating with no phase for reflection yeah i was like well how did you know it worked it's like you just go straight back in and continue i'm like that's continuation you're 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 not spiraling you're just a circle mm -hmm. like yeah. there's no there's no there's no way to elevate that and go to new levels with what you're doing. You are literally going round. And they were like, is that why we're always firefighting? It's like, yes, that's exactly why you're firefighting. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, I think that's true. And I think, you know, it's, I'm trying to think, you know, it's the difference between, you know, going to a, a boot camp to get fit or starting running every day or start, you know, exercising every day something like that and i think that you know i think we all realize now that just going away for a two day boot camp is not going to get you fit it's going to probably make you throw up a bit but <laughs> but you know and it might be helpful in some senses but if it doesn't lead to ongoing um a rhythm of exercise then you you know that fitness comes through the repetition and the and the ongoing and yeah. i think that that change is an ongoing process it's not a once and done and and it's not just a you decide this stuff you implement this stuff you're done it's a growth in how you think it's a growth in how you you become strategic you don't just become you don't just strategize and yeah. uh, and i think th that change for churches i think that that's becoming the need and i think that's the trend that i'm starting to see is that church wants to become not just they don't want to just strategize they want to become strategic and that's really really important yeah absolutely i've loved this conversation chris it's been a good one there we are um yeah well lee thank you so much again for for joining me and thank you for uh you know sharing with those things that we've been thinking through and uh we will pick up another episode at another point and i'm sure we'll, we'll, we'll probably revisit what this kind of episode again because this has been a, a lot of fun um and it's and and you know there's a lot of there's more podcasts that we can come out from that. And, uh, and, you know, we did, we started thinking the thinking church podcast, not so we could teach you everything uh, because we didn't want it to be a kind of like a, a teacher student style podcast. We always wanted it to be a conversation. And so that means that if you want to get involved in the conversation, uh, we have a, a web, uh, our email that you can, you can email us podcast at thinking church. We'd love to be able to read uh, stuff out on, on the air. So, uh, on the air is that a thing oh, on the podcast uh and so we'd love to be able to read out your thoughts your discussions your questions as well so um we're not just we're not saying here that we are we are all the answer because we're not but we we want to be part of the conversation we want to be we're facilitators that's that's what we are at the end of the day we're here to help you think and uh we're not just teachers that are telling you what to do uh so yeah that, that, that so uh thank you lee and i'll see you again next week thank you chris see you next week
Well, thank you so much for joining us for this week's episode. And don't forget that you can send in your thoughts, comments, uh, discussions for whatever we've talked about. Uh, Just drop us an email, podcast at thinking.church, and we'd love to be able to read it out on the show. Uh, We'll be back with another podcast next week, so stay tuned for that. Uh, We will see you soon. Bye for now.